In today's video, we are gonna be talking about the potential removal of the handoff auto switches and the run and fault lamps from the mechanical services switchboard, the MSSB, also in other countries known as a motor control panel or a motor control center. Now, for a lot of you BMS people, you're wondering, like Bryce, why are we talking about this? You know, handoff auto switches, run and fault lamps, they're part of the mechanical system you know, the mechanical switchboards and the mechanical electricians if you have them. But it is actually really important to us because this first brief discussion about removing the handoff auto switches, run of fault lamps off the Mac boards, it transitions us into a much bigger discussion around removing the Mac board completely. Once you remove the Mac board completely from a plant room, it enables us to move towards distributed controls throughout the plant room, and then following on from that distributed power and controls across the plant room to each piece of mechanical equipment. Now, once we get to that stage, it will allow us to significantly start our BMS installation months sooner than we normally would. And then obviously leading on from that, we will actually be able to start commissioning months sooner. Now, if we could sort of free up a month or two of commissioning time that we don't have right now, we are going to dramatically resolve our biggest issue at the moment, which is our compressed commissioning timeframes as we're approaching practical completion. When all the previous trades have run slightly late and the end date hasn't moved, then our you know, three month commissioning frame gets compressed down to one month of commissioning. So although this discussion doesn't sound like a BMS thing, it is actually something that we need to start on a longer journey towards making a completely significant change in the BMS industry. Let's start off by discussing why do we have handoff auto switches and run and fault lamps on MEC boards. Because I think these are one of those legacy things that we needed a long time ago that's just sort of followed us through for the last 20, 30 years. So let's go back to before we had building management systems. So we never had graphics, alarms, and trends. We had no window into the control system. I think that around six o'clock in the morning, the building engineer would come to site and would do his site walk arounds. And he would walk through all the plant rooms and just poke his head into each plant room and check that on all the mech boards, all the green lights were on and there were no red lights. Everything was mostly running and nothing had failed. And then we'd go back off and do his daily tasks. Nowadays, I doubt it that facility managers and building managers have the time to do site walkarounds. At best, they would grab a coffee, sit down at the, at the BMS, run through some graphics and check, do I have some chillers running, a couple of boilers, some cooling towers, AHUs are mostly running, no major deal breakers for the day, and then get off to dealing with emails and tenant issues. So that need for the green light and the red light on the mech board, I don't think they provide us with that much use really. During construction phase, they might help a bit with the mechanical commissioning technician to see what's going on. Um, but that's, you know, for the next 20, 30 years, I don't think there's a lot of value in that. Now the handoff auto switches, before we had, had building management systems, and, and actually in those days, we didn't really have variable speed drives. It was mostly all DOL, direct online. So the only way for you to override a contactor for a fan or a pump in without a BMS was to go up to the mech board and put it to manual and it would sort of override the control circuit, the contactor would come in and the fan or the pump would run. So we sort of needed that for like, we were in an emergency. But nowadays we have variable speed drives in most cases. So, and the variable speed drive actually has, you know, the handoff auto functions built into the keypad buttons. And also actually has the run and fault built into it because it'll tell you if it's running, um, if it's drawing current or it's faulted. So the handoff auto switch and the run and fault lamps, they're pretty much provided on the variable speed drives. So if you had a major issue, what you'd probably do is you run into the plant room and the BMS has completely failed, I guess, and you would run to each one of these variable speed drives, push the hand start buttons, ramp them up, get some water in the circuit, get some air in the circuit, maybe run to your chiller on the keypad, push the start button. You can do that anyway through the variable speed drives. You don't need the mech boards nowadays to still do that. And if you think about it, you know, what use does that hand position on the switch do. When you switch into hand, the variable speed drive gets enabled and it turns on and ramps up to its minimum speed. 
So even if you did that, you're still gonna to have to go to the VSD anyway, push the hand start button and ramp it up to get more water or more air into the system. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, obviously, when you put the, the, the mech boy into hand and the VSD comes on a moving speed, we're not enabling our temperature control loops or our pressure control loops or any of those sort of BMS controlled um, control loops. So it's really not gonna help you very much anyway if you're in trouble. Now I think, you know, the driver here really is to start this thought process around the handoff auto switches in the run. And I'm pretty sure most of you would probably, you know, think that through and think, you know, we don't really need handoff auto switches and run a fault lamps. Um, later on on another day, we'll talk more about the next step between actually removing the mech board completely. But it was good to have this first discussion and get the ball rolling and get people starting to think about, you know, why do we have mech boards? We don't have contactors in there anymore. We don't have overloads in there anymore. We have these variable speed drives. Once you remove that um, and you don't have the contactors in there, really, why do you have a mech board? Um, there's a few things like fire and smoke control, which is still in the mech board, which is important, but that can be dealt with outside of it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.